In January, the Orion Township Fire Department was called to an early morning fire at the Lake Orion Pet Center. The building, including several apartments, was eventually demolished. Lake Orion residents enjoyed carnival rides and games at the Lions Club's annual Jubilee, kicking off a week of events leading up to dueling fireworks over the lake. Dragon on the Lake returned to Lake Orion in August, with numerous events taking place over the course of four days, concluding with the popular Dragon Boat Races on Sunday. The vandalized remains of the Rudd's Mill Dam were removed from Pink Creek in September. The response for the community may surprise you. Hello, I'm Stacy Calloway. And I'm Shannon Line. Those were just some of the stories that helped shape Lake Orion in the year 2017. Join us as we look back at 2017 on the Year in Review. While most people slept in after ringing in the new year, a group of people came together to get a head start on their New Year's resolutions. On the morning of Sunday, January 1st, approximately 300 runners of all ages gathered in downtown Lake Orion for the start of the 2017 resolution run. Registration took place at Lockhart's Barbecue, then runners assembled at the starting line on Lapeer Street for the 10 a.m. start. Runner, here above. The course led participants through the neighborhoods of downtown Lake Orion, with the finish line located at Broadway south of Flint Street. Runners had to complete two laps to complete the 5K race. They had beautiful weather to run through downtown Lake Orion today. Um, that they are very dedicated people, and that I am honored to have been part of uh, this run and part of the dedication that they show for their sport. On the morning of Saturday, January 28th, the Orion Township Fire Department was alerted to a fire in downtown Lake Orion. Upon arrival, firefighters found the building that houses the Lake Orion Pet Center engulfed in flames. We got the call, I believe approximately 8, 12 in the morning that uh, somebody called and said the building was on fire. They actually saw flames and stuff. Uh, we were here within a, a minute after the tone went off. Uh, upon my approach, why uh, it was uh, already breaching through the outer walls between the first and second floor. Heavy fire in the window above us, uh, above the, on the second floor. Um, so it had been going for quite a while. Due to the extensive damage of the building, fire inspectors were never able to conclusively determine the cause of the fire. Following a New Year's Eve bash, 51 North in downtown Lake Orion closed its doors for good. The restaurant and brewery opened its doors in January of 2013 and quickly became a gathering place for its residents and often hosted local events. They also won several medals for their locally brewed beer. We're truly excited to be here. You know, it's nice to uh, jump in. You know, we've been open for a number of months, but I wanted to make sure that this was a nicer day for something like this. But becoming part of the community is a big part of this whole operation. So jumping in with the Chamber of Commerce, helping out the, the community at large is a very, very big thing for 51. After extensive remodeling, the building reopened to the public in September as the Fork and Pint Restaurant. Following the promotion of Dragons varsity football coach Chris Bell to athletic director, it was announced that John Blackstock would replace Chris Bell as the head coach in January. A Bad Axe native, Blackstock was hired in 1998 as the phys ed teacher and assistant coach. For 19 years, he coached varsity defensive backs and coordinated special teams. You know, uh, excited, nervous, and uh, a little bit of everything in between. Um, but you know, that nervousness has really turned to excitement now. On the morning of Saturday, February 4th, 18 teams braved the wind and cold to participate in the Ice Cup Golf Challenge. The nine-hole course had golfers putting on the ice on Lake Orion and teeing off on Broadway Street in downtown Lake Orion. Warming stations offered relief from the frigid temperatures. When the final scores were tallied, there was a three-way tie for first. The Flint Tropics, Bomer's Belly Acres, and the Reynolds Rejects each scored 21 for nine holes. Each winning team received the coveted silver flask. The event acted as a fundraiser netting $15,000 for charitable causes such as Beds for Kids, Oxford Orion Fish, Lake Orion Schools, and International Water Projects. The presenting sponsor for the third straight year was Hamilton Chevrolet. Following the Ice Cup Golf Challenge, the Lake Orion Lions hosted its third annual outhouse race on Broadway Street 
in downtown Lake Orion. Several teams competed for grand prize, a golden toilet seat. That same day, ONTV hosted its seventh annual food drive, benefiting Oxford Orion Fish. The live broadcast began at 10 a.m. as Kevin McCormick and Bria Brown invited viewers to come to the Orion Center to donate food. A donation of five items or $5 earned each person a raffle ticket that could be used towards numerous prizes donated by local businesses. Visitors were encouraged to stick around to enjoy live entertainment throughout the day, including Bob Lowe, Erica Murad, and L.A. Dance. We were almost overwhelmed with the amount of uh, donations coming in and the people coming in and out and it was, it was really, really satisfying to see the reaction from uh, Orion residents, uh, the, the other groups that were coming in to perform for us like LA Dance, they came in huge for us, huge uh, with the amount of uh, donations. The, the Cub Scouts came in and dropped off way more than we ever expected so it was a bonus. Um, our goal is 5,000 pounds and we don't have the total numbers in but it's going to look like we're going to surpass that by a, a nice margin. It, this could potentially be the largest collection we've ever had. Donations of food and money streamed in throughout the six-hour broadcast, which added to the totals dropped off during the week leading up to the event. Volunteers came in to help sort and box up the donations, and representatives of FISH arrived to collect the donations and deliver them to the food pantry. When the food drive wrapped up, it was estimated that the community donated over 6,200 pounds of food, which is the most ever in the history of the event. On Thursday, February 9th, representatives of the Orion Area Chamber of Commerce and the Downtown Development Authority gathered at Nuts About Chocolate in downtown Lake Orion to celebrate its official grain opening with a ribbon cutting ceremony. Ready? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. The chocolate and confections shop quietly opened its doors on November 3rd of 2016. Owned by Oxford residents Joseph and Tina Morin, Nuts About Chocolate is the first business venture for the couple who recently celebrated 25 years of marriage. Oh, it's been amazing. Uh, the soft opening was a big learning curve for us. Uh, chocolate's very temperamental, having doors swing open and closed temperatures, the sunlight was a big huge one as well, and then learning the taste of the community, what they like, what they prefer, and we're still learning as we're going. Like we always say, when you come into the chocolate shop, you're already happy. You're wanting to be happy. You're wanting to find that little taste of sunshine for yourself, and so therefore you're already pretty happy, and it's very nice because they come in and they're, like, they're super excited about what we have, the concept of us, and our chocolate itself, and the uniqueness of it. On Saturday, February 11th, Orion Township hosted its first ever toy and comic expo at the Orion Center. Sellers purchased 17 tables at the event offering comics, vintage toys, and a wide variety of collectibles. The event was free to the public and was successful enough to encourage organizers to host another one in September, which was even more successful. On Saturday, February 25th, 18 restaurants took part in the Lions Club's second annual Taste of the Town event, which was held at Kings Court Castle at Canterbury Village. An estimated 150 people were able to sample dishes ranging from salads to entrees to desserts. We pretty much approach every single restaurant in town. And of course, we like to concentrate on the locally owned restaurants and the majority of them have shown up. It usually takes two or three visits to them to convince them that it is a great event. When they get here, we encourage them to bring their menus, bring discount coupons, and the people, the restaurants that I talked to last year after the event, they said their business went way up because people were coming back to visit them after they had tasted their food here. During an assembly at Carpenter Elementary School on the morning of Wednesday, March 1st, it was announced that Penny Robertson was named America's favorite crossing guard. Principal Adam Weldon welcomed visitors and students presented the crossing guard with the award and rain gear to help her on the job. The contest was organized by Safe Kids Worldwide and sponsored by FedEx. Penny Robertson is a mother of two boys and has been a crossing guard at Carpenter Elementary for five years. Already a staff associate at the school, she told us she applied for the crossing guard position when no one else stepped up. Um, nobody wanted the job and the kids need to be safe. We had nobody that would apply for the job, so I was already here as a staff associate, so I took it upon myself to say, you know what, it needs to be done, so we did it. How does it feel today to just get this award? I can't even put into words what this is humbling. It, it's nice. I feel so loved, blessed beyond belief. I mean, these guys are like my family. 
I take care of these kids like they're my own. I mean, it's a very busy street. People don't always see these kids because they're, they're little kids that I cross. I only have a couple big kids. They're little ones. And when the people aren't paying attention, they're not going to see them if I'm not out there. And sometimes they don't even see me. So it's a very busy street. It's a thoroughfax between two major streets. So it's very important that somebody's out there. On the morning of Saturday, March 11th, 210 fifth graders formed 50 teams for the 2017 Battle of the Books held at Scripps Middle School. The students were given a list of 15 books to read back in November. At the event, the students were asked 50 questions and had to respond with a book's title and author. Many of the teams were dressed in colorful costumes and came up with creative team they names. They were so excited. I have to say I think that this year were some of the most creative costumes that we've seen. They're always creative, um, but this year I just thought they were very funny with the team names that accompanied the costumes. Following the competition, the library staff tallied up the scores and the teams returned on Tuesday for an awards ceremony held at Lake Orion High School. The evening kicked off with a presentation from author Allison DeCamp, whose book, My Near Death Adventures, was one of the 15 books included in the competition. Following the presentation, teams were called up on stage to receive a certificate of participation. Three teams with the highest scores were saved for last. Named winner of 2017 Battle of the Books was the Nameless Team, representing Carpenter Elementary School. They came out on top with a score of 94. On Saturday, March 18th, the Knights of Columbus Hall on Orion Road was the site of the third annual Lions Races. 30 local businesses and community groups purchased wooden lions that were decorated for the big race. The creativity of the businesses in this community, absolutely awesome and a lot of fun. Attendees enjoyed a buffet dinner before the start of the races. At 7 p.m., the first race of the evening was underway. Six lions were lined up at the time with large fuzzy dice determining which lions advanced. The first lion to reach the finish line received a medal and attendees were encouraged to place bets on each race. There was a total of 10 races. There were also raffles throughout the night and the lion representing Go GOP was named Best Decorated. On the evening of Saturday, March 25th, the Orion Art Center hosted its 28th annual gala. The theme was A Night in Paris, and it was the first time the event was held at the Paint Creek Country Club in Lake Orion. 230 people attended the event, a record turnout for the gala. Attendees enjoyed dinner and dancing, and money was raised through ticket sales and a silent auction. We have a lot of silent auction items, which is all community partner donated, um, and so that's what makes the silent auction possible, as well as ticket items. And those, there's trips, booze baskets, all sorts of great things for different genres, different things that you're into, and all different prices. Each year at the event, the Art Center announces its Artist of the Year and Patron of the Arts. Recognized as 2017's Patron of the Arts was James Jenkins, who got involved with the Art Center in 2008 and was instrumental in helping to develop the annual Dragon on the Lake Festival. First of all, it's flattering and it's humbling. I'm really honored. Um, so many people put so much work into it, don't really deserve it myself. You know what, I got involved because I have a son that was into the theater and the arts and I watched him struggle in school and with relationships and maybe get picked on a little bit and so I felt like this was a way for me to give back to kind of give people a voice, let the artists have a voice and really also to help build communities. So it's really an honor to be able to do that. Um, I don't feel like it's overdue or anything. I'm just excited to be here and to hang out with uh, about, I don't know, 220 of my closest friends. And named 2017's Artist of the Year was Janice Price, a 33-year resident of Lake Orion. Not only was she named Artist of the Year, but she also recently accepted the role of Executive Director at the Orion Art Center. Well, I think that the Orion Art Center is constantly evolving and becoming more connected to the community, more connected to the artists surrounding the community, building a stronger base, and just getting um, a bit more professional as an organization. On the morning of Wednesday, March 29th, Orion Township Supervisor Chris Barnett delivered his fifth State of Township address. This year's event was held at Woodside Bible Church, located on the grounds of Canterbury Village. Pastor Rick Seidel welcomed those in attendance, and Lake Orion High School's Unichoir performed several numbers, including the National Anthem. 
Lake Orion Schools Superintendent Marion Janopoulos introduced the township supervisor who announced that the theme of his presentation would be the Lake Orion's extraordinary people and places. On the morning of Saturday, April 1st, Orion Township hosted its annual Bunny Bop at the Orion Center. The event was split up into two sessions, with 60 children taking part in each session. Families enjoyed snacks, crafts, and plenty of photo opportunities. When families come to the Bunny Bop, we have the Easter Bunny here for them to take pictures with, and then we have Walgreens again who's taking photos and providing free prints for all of the families. We have live bunnies from the 4-H Bunny Club. They bring their bunnies so that the kids have an opportunity to actually pet the bunnies. And then we've got Easter theme craft and spring theme crafts, and then we have uh, snacks. Due to muddy conditions outdoors, the Easter egg hunt was moved inside the Orion Center. Divided by age groups, children hunted for plastic eggs filled with candy and fun surprises. The Bunny Bop has been held each year at the Orion Center since the building opened to the public in 2012, with the exception of 2016. On Monday, April 3rd, we visited with new village manager, Joe Young, during his first day on the job. Young replaced Darren McClary, who left after serving Lake Orion for four years to accept a position with the city of Ypsilanti. With more than 40 years of experience under his belt, Young had been deputy mayor in Pontiac, finance director in Kalamazoo, city manager of Hazel Park, and the manager of Oxford for more than 12 years. You know, it's only two miles away. It's a growing, thriving community. Uh, the great people here as there is in Oxford, and uh, I thought that I could help contribute to what their needs are, looking at a number of goals and objectives that the council set, and a lot of new development, and a lot of needs in the community from and the lake issues and cemetery issues and road issues and all the things that government as a business needs to address. On the evening of Thursday, April 13th, the Orion Art Center hosted a reception for its annual Recreate Recycled Art Show sponsored by Waste Management. The Art Center received dozens of submissions from artists of all ages. The theme of this year's event was United in Patriotism and each artwork had to incorporate recycled materials and found objects. Oh, it was absolutely fabulous. You know, we, we started out really slow because it was planned during the spring break and uh, different tests at school. So the participation started out really slow, but then it really ramped up at the end. And some of the work that we got in, it was so exciting. I think everyone was really thrilled to see how energetic some of the pieces were and how creative the artists were that carried out the patriotic theme. We wanted the theme to somehow represent United in Patriotism and there are some fabulous pieces here that speak to the red, white and blue and Americana. Um, but then it's also use of materials. Then we have a lot of other pieces that are traditional patriotism, red, white and blue themed, um, Americana as I said. So it, the materials really vary and when people see the art they'll see that the use of materials vary from our Cub Scouts to our student in um, the middle school that created her. Um, with just paper and boxes and the youth art is fabulous. It's worth the visit for the youth art alone. On the evening of Friday, April 21st, ONTV's family volunteers were invited to come to King's Court's Castle at Canterbury Village for ONTV's annual volunteer appreciation banquet. Attendees enjoyed a buffet, dinner, and watched a video that showed clips of the wide variety of programs produced over the past year our annual event to honor the volunteers who make us who we are without our volunteer producers and uh, coming in and making the programming and working with us, Owen TV would just be nothing. So uh, today we give back to them to say thank you for all their hard work and sacrifice of time and sweat and effort uh, to make Owen TV what we are. The highlight of the evening was an award ceremony that recognized volunteer producers and interns. Receiving the Golden Mike Award was Kevin McCormick, who provides commentary and sideline reporting on high school sports and hosted Ello Sports Update and Owen TV's Food Drive. The award for Volunteer of the Year went to two deserving individuals. Sue Lovelace and Evelyn Doyle were recognized for the countless hours they've served while helping out on various Owen TV productions. And recognized as Producers of the Year were Sammy and Anthony Terramina for the sheer volume of content produced in 2016. The duo not only produced the popular Between Terramina's Sports Talk program, but Sammy produces a weekly podcast called OAA Now, and Anthony produces History Now. In April, Lake Orion native Nicole Curtis began work on a Lake Orion home to be featured on her popular DIY show, Rehab Addict. ONTV's Joe Johnson was there for the kickoff event. 
On Saturday, April 22nd, fans of the HGTV show Rehab Addict lined up for a chance to tour the Lake Orion Cottage that will be renovated by the show's host, Nicole Curtis. The open house and book signing acted as a fundraiser for a great cause. The reason we started doing this is that it's a really easy way for us to raise money for a local family that needs help. And we started it years ago with um, for Brian Thomas, who is also a Lake Orion graduate and a good friend of ours. And we, you know, just had this idea, what if we charge people to go in these houses? Will we raise some money? And we expected a couple hundred, like a couple hundred dollars, and we ended up making thousands. And over the years, I think this is our, maybe our 10th or 11th open house, and we've been able to help some really great families. Uh, Tessa came up today, she's the daughter of uh, my right-hand guy, Bobby, and she's been battling stage four neuroblastoma for years and many people recognize her from our big Ransom Gillis open house a couple years ago. But I think it's really important that people realize that there are so many families locally that need help and every dollar that they bring to our open house goes right to that family. Nicole purchased this cottage on Heights near M24 hoping to save it from demolition. She said it will take a couple of months to complete the work on the home to restore it to its former glory. I just happened to come across this house online. I'm always searching online for houses and everything, and it it was cheap, it was cute, and I knew that it was a little old cottage in Lake Orion, and we don't have that many around here anymore. People are tearing them down. We just lost the Bubblegum Mansion, which was a huge blow to our historic value here in Lake Orion. It's really important to me that we keep some part of our history, and the whole history of Lake Orion is these cottages. I mean, that's really what started it all. So this one was a cottage, 1925, and, um, you know, it's not the ideal location, it's, it, but I, we laugh that it's actually on M24, but it's not. But it's also a great starter home. Um, the market value in this area has gone up so much that if you, you know, are under 200,000, you can't buy a home for your family in this area. So it is important that houses like this stay standing and that there is still affordable housing for people to come into our neighborhood. In Lake Orion, this is Joe Johnson reporting for ONTV News. On Saturday, April 29th, the Friends of the Orion Township Public Library hosted their annual Passport to Spring fundraiser. The library was transformed into an exhibit of Polish culture, including music, dance, food, art, and more. Tonight is our Passport to Spring. It's the biggest fundraiser for the Friends of the Library. The Friends of the Library are the fundraising source for the library. So in addition to the tax dollars that we get, uh, we don't always have enough money to do all the things that we want to do, especially programming. But this event tonight is actually fundraising for our teen room. So we are trying to do some technology upgrades for our teens. And um, so this event is fundraising dollars for us to be able to upgrade our teen room. And seeing the turnout tonight, I think we're going to be very successful in our efforts to do that. It's just a, it's heartwarming to me to see this many people come out to the support the library tonight. On the morning of Tuesday, May 2nd, the Orion Center hosted its Spring Senior Health and Screening Expo. Approximately 20 vendors were set up in the center's banquet room, offering information on health-related products and services. And Beaumont offered about a dozen health screenings, ranging from hearing and vision to diet and fitness. Participants were encouraged to take the results of their screenings to their personal physician. The 17th annual Lake Orion Flower and Art Fair kicked off at 11 a.m. on Friday, May 12th and continued on Saturday from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. 85 vendors lined the streets of Flint and Broadway in downtown Lake Orion offering plants and flowers, food and refreshments, art and home improvement items. The event has become an annual tradition for local families looking for something fun to do over Mother's Day weekend. It's a juried event, so we are very careful about who we bring in. Um, we make sure we like the way their, um, their booth looks. We have them send pictures. We look at their product. Um, we look at the spread of um, what we have. Um, this year we've got about 15% um, flower and garden um, vendors. We've got about 35% arts and handcrafted um, items. Um, we've got some hot food. It's excellent. We're, we're very, very pleased. We've got a few home improvements, some kind of big home improvement guys who can really talk to you if you're interested in making improvements to your house. And we're very pleased with everything we've got. This is a great event, and we thank all of those vendors for coming in. On Saturday, May 13th, mail carriers across the country went on their usual routes, but in addition to delivering mail, they collected food left at mailboxes during the 25th annual Stamp Out Hunger Food Drive. 
Here in Lake Orion, mail carriers pulled up to the loading dock at the post office to unload the non-perishable items collected throughout the community. Volunteers, including kids and retirees, helped unload and box up the donations. The carriers, which by the way work very hard every day, especially during the holidays, they, they organize all this and get it all going. And uh, we just, you know, get the word out. Folks donate the food and uh, we just get it to the, right, to the right place for those that aren't as fortunate as all of us that, you know, might have a job right now. Lake Orion's a really nice community. I know some friends in Lake Orion and, uh, you know, I get to get out, get out on the lake with them every once in a while. And, but I've got to see a lot of the people coming in here into the post office and there's just a really a lot of nice people out here. This is a, this is a really nice community out here and it's, it's just cool to do something for some that aren't as fortunate as some of us. On Saturday, May 20th, the Orion Area Chamber hosted its third annual Healthy Body, Healthy Mind Expo. After two years at Canterbury Village, the event moved to Walden Middle School, occupying the cafeteria and gyms. Looking for more square footage, looking to keep it all on one level, and looking to sort of maybe, you know, make people know that this is a family event. So we thought maybe putting it in the middle school would, would let people know that this is for, you know, a family event as well. Approximately 60 vendors offered products and services in seven different categories of health and well-being, including food vendors, and visitors were able to sample some healthy options during the soup and stew stroll and were encouraged to vote on their favorite. We also ran into former Detroit Lions wide receiver Herman Moore, who was there supporting his wife Angela's business, The Body Principle, which has been located in Lake Orion for over nine years. I, I love the health and fitness aspect of it, uh, in particular the youth. We always try and be on the front side of things, uh, the, uh, prevention, and uh, allowing the young individuals to, to get healthy habits early. And uh, it's something I think goes a long way. And uh, it's, a, it's important that we're out and we're connecting. As I said before, the, the health and fitness side of it is a big component to everything that we do in everyday life. The very first Dragon Dash took place in 1997 as participants followed a course on the safety path along Joslin Road. On the morning of Sunday, May 21st, almost 200 runners lined up for the start of the 21st running of the annual event. Actually, our numbers are up pretty good. We had a lot of pre-registered runners. We had a lot of race day registrations come in, so I think we're probably pretty close to 200 runners for this year, which is fabulous. I think the threatening skies probably did keep some people at home this morning, but you know, those hardcore runners, they'll run in anything. <laughs> On the morning of Monday, May 29th, veterans and members of the Lake Orion community gathered at East Lawn Cemetery on Orion Road for the first of several observances on Memorial Day. American Legion Post 233 Commander John Ranville welcomed those in attendance and led a solemn ceremony at the Veterans Monument. The previous day, volunteers placed approximately 600 mini flags on the graves of veterans. New Ladies Auxiliary President Robin Cram placed a wreath at the Veterans Monument. Following the ceremony, the group gathered at Children's Park in downtown Lake Orion for a water ceremony to honor those who have lost their lives at sea. This time, a wreath was dropped into the waters of Pink Creek. At 11 a.m., hundreds of patriotic residents lined the streets of downtown Lake Orion for the start of the annual Memorial Day Parade. Two A-10 Warthogs out of the Selfridge Air Base performed a flyover precisely at 11 a.m. to the delight of the crowd. Police Chief Jerry Narsh led the parade in the department's vintage 1941 Ford police car. His passenger was honored veteran Bob Butler, a World War II veteran and Lake Orion resident. Following the parade, close to 200 runners and walkers gathered at the intersection of Flint and Broadway for the start of a brand new event. The first annual Orion Veterans Memorial Day 5K race acted as a fundraiser benefiting the Orion Veterans Memorial and the Lake Orion DDA. The Veterans Memorial Board, uh, which I am blessed to serve on, has been talking about an event out here uh, for several years uh, to bring awareness and to just, you know, support our memorial. So uh, it, it, we've been working on it for a couple years, a 5K idea, and this year it kind of all came together uh, with a great partnership with the downtown uh, Lake Orion DDA. Uh, so this is our first annual Memorial Day 5K, and again, 60% of the proceeds raised go to support the memorial, and 40% uh, goes to support our DDA. So. We gather here today on the most important of all legal holidays, Memorial Day. 
Memorial Day is the day for Americans to observe with reverence and devotion to our military men and women who sacrificed their lives in all wars for our freedom and inalienable rights purchased at a very high price. On the afternoon of Thursday, June 1st, chamber members arrived at Camp Agawam for the 2017 Chamber Picnic. Visitors enjoy games and music as Culver's provided its popular butter burgers and frozen custard. Yeah, so this year we're celebrating uh, Orion Township Parks. Um, we're here at Camp Agawam, which is obviously a beautiful place to be. I don't know, trying to bring a little bit of awareness that it's even here, so maybe hopefully get more people coming in here and using this facility. Um, and then we're also highlighting a charity today, which is the Daisy Project, and you know they're in, uh, to the inclusive playground at Friendship Park. So we're going to help raise money for the uh, ball field that's coming. Um, so yeah, celebrating all things Orient Township. For many, the highlight of the afternoon was an opportunity to drop one of several dignitaries in the freezing cold water of the dunk tank. The victims included Chamber President Matt Pfeiffer, Lake Orion Police Chief Jerry Narsh, Orion Township Supervisor Chris Barnett, and Executive Director Kim Urbanowski. Individuals paid $10 for three throws, with the money raised going toward Orion on Deck, an inclusive ballpark proposed by the DAISY Project that will allow people of all abilities to take part in a game of baseball or softball. On the morning of Saturday, June 3rd, teams of walkers and runners assembled at Friendship Park for the start of the 2017 North Oakland Relay for Life. After event lead Mary Woods welcomed this year's participants, the 2017 relay was underway. Team members representing Orion, Oxford, Brandon, and Ortonville walked a course laid out in Friendship Park until midnight. A total of 18 teams registered for the event through the Relay for Life website and had already raised $20,000 before the event even started. Participating teams raised funds by selling baked goods and trinkets, and silent and live auctions raised additional money to benefit the efforts of the American Cancer Society. Uh, the money raised for the event will go to the American Cancer Society, which will use that money for research, um, you know, manning the helplines, getting people out to you know, figure out a way to get rid of this disease. On Sunday, June 4th, staff, students, and parents gathered together for a 20th birthday bash at Orion Oaks Elementary School. Visitors enjoyed food and refreshments. Two inflatables and a DJ provided music on a sunny summer afternoon. Well, today we're celebrating our 20th anniversary. We call it our 20th birthday party. The building has been open for 20 years now and thousands of students have come through here and we thought it was uh, good to have a big celebration of all the wonderful things that have gone on in Orion Oaks in the last 20 years. There's just so many memories here. So many memories, so many lives that the, the school, uh, that students have been touched by these teachers and um, it's just a very special, special place for a lot of students and a lot of um, parents and teachers. The school district broke ground on Orion Oaks in August of 1995. One year later, its first students stepped off the school bus and into history as they enjoyed the first day of school at the new location. While that was going on, staff, students, and alumni were gathering at another elementary school two miles north of Orion Oaks for a very different reason. In November of 2016, it was announced that the district would be closing Pine Tree Elementary. As the school year wound down, staff, students, and alumni came together for an open house to say goodbye to the school. You know, it's been a, a roller coaster of emotions for sure. Um, and, and a lot of us have commented today that it's been really interesting to see uh, some of the original staff come back in. It, it's hard to believe that 45 years go so fast. I think that's the one thing that a lot of people have said that you blink and, uh, and your career has, has gone. Um, it, but to see everyone come back, uh, this has been a really, uh, really cool experience. Very fitting for everybody to have a chance to see each other one last time and, and get to see the building again. Pine Tree opened its doors for the 1972 school year. Its first principal, Lee Umstead, attended the open house. Diane Danaskis taught at the school as a special education teacher beginning in 1984 and became principal in 2000. She retired in 2015. It's bittersweet. I mean, it was a great building to work. I'm going to cry. <laughs> it's a great place to be. Um, one of our former teachers, I said it was built into the bricks of Pine Tree that no matter who was here, it had that family atmosphere. So the parents, the staff, the students, everybody. Um, it truly is a family, so um, change happens, and I know that, but I'm glad that has been here for the years it's been here. On the morning of Saturday, June 10th, almost 100 runners and walkers assembled at the Wildwood Amphitheater for the start of the fifth annual Family Fun Color Run. 
After four years at Friendship Park, the event moved to Wildwood, where participants of all ages were directed to the Polly Ann Trail. Runners and walkers traveled south past Scripps before turning around and heading back to Wildwood. Volunteers stationed along the path dusted participants with color corn starch. I would say there's several benefits to this event for North Oakland. Number one, it's um, there's 65 to 75 people that now know what North Oakland does. Um, and so that's a great benefit. Um, we also, um, obviously we charge a fee, so we're getting um, some, uh, some income from the race. And um, we also are able to introduce all of the sponsors. We've got sponsor signs all around, which hopefully you'll take some pictures of. And um, so we get to introduce those sponsors to um, community members that are running past their signs. On Thursday, June 22nd, over 125 cars filled up the parking lot at Galling Buick GMC on M24 for the dealership's first car cruise of the season. DJ Rockin' Ronnie was back spinning the oldies during the show. It was the first of four shows scheduled in 2017, which benefited the Orion Veterans Memorial and local veterans groups. Later that evening, local dignitaries and members of the Lions Club gathered at the intersection of Flint and Broadway to officially kick off the start of the Lions Club 2017 Jubilee. Due to major road construction in 2009, the Jubilee moved to Canterbury Village for four years. It returned to downtown Lake Orion in 2014. Now in its 41st year, the Jubilee offers Lake Orion residents rides, games, and food, courtesy of Skirbeck Entertainment. A lot of people recognize this as a homecoming. Their children will come back from college, Old friends that moved away will come back and stay with them. This is a great event. Down at the beer tent, you'll see people you haven't seen for three, five, ten years. You'll see people that you've known for 30. It's just a really good time. It's a great community event, very uh, uh, child oriented, um, a lot of rides for the kids. Great time. Jamie Skurback is the third generation, fourth generation of Skurback. Uh, they were out of Wisconsin. They started as circus acts four generations ago. So Skurback does this, and Skurback only works with um, nonprofit organizations. They don't just set up in a parking lot and do it for themselves. It's always got to be tied in with a, a service organization. And we we're really fortunate because they're really good, honest, clean people. I mean, they keep the grounds clean, and it's 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 really helpful for us. Real good, great company, really really willing to help. They, they donate to the fireworks as well besides giving, giving us our percentage of profit and uh, it's a good thing. On the evening of Saturday, June 24th, residents began to gather on the shores of Lake Orion, including Greens Park and Pelton's Point in anticipation of the fireworks show. Boaters took to the water and passengers boarded the Grand Princess for a front row seat. At precisely 10 p.m., the first shell was launched. Over the course of the 20-minute show, spectators enjoyed a spectacular show, including the grand finale. On Saturday, July 1st, residents from throughout Metro Detroit came to Lake Orion to get a good seat for the annual fireworks show. Passengers boarded the Grand Princess around 8.30 p.m. and enjoyed music, food, and fun cruising around the lake prior to the show. For the second year in a row, the Lake Orion Fireworks Association put together a dueling fireworks show courtesy of Ace Pyro. Two barges were placed on the lake, one west of Bellevue Island and one near Park Island. Uh, I don't know if people are aware, but we were named number 14th in the country last year in fireworks ahead of Chicago. So, I mean, the thing is, we're very unique with the dueling fireworks, the two barges on each side of uh, Lake Orion shooting simultaneous sh shows and uh, we're very proud of the fact that we're able to raise the money through our donations and fundraisers to put on that show because as you know we don't take any money from the government this is all this is a show for the people by the people on july 6th orion township hosted its annual summer sizzle at the orion center owen tv's drew dargavel was there to get the story on Thursday, July 6th, the Orion Center hosted the annual Lake Orion Summer Sizzle put on by the Orion Township Community Programs. 
Hundreds of kids of all ages came out to this free event, which featured plenty of free food and snacks, carnival games, face painting, bounce houses, balloons, and much more. We caught up with the Recreation Program Supervisor for Orion Township, Jennifer Vesna, to learn more about this event. The Summer Sizzle is really just a give back to the community. It's just our free summer event to bring the community out into the Orient Center, into the parks, and just give a give back to the community. Uh, that's our next event is the Big Red Gig. We'll have um, kind of the same thing. It's $5 at the gate, but all the activities once you get in are free, and we'll have dozens of vehicles for kids to climb on. Um, we'll have pizza for sale through the concessions, and uh, in the past we've had probably, let's see, maybe three to 4,000 people at the event. Reporting from the Orion Center for ONTV News, I'm Drew Dargavel. On Saturday, July 7th, the Lake Orion Wiffle Ball Association hosted its annual tournament at the legendary Vanden Boom Field on the shores of Lake Orion. 32 players formed eight teams representing various branches of the military. Advancing to the championship game was the undefeated Navy team to take on the 4-1 Marine Corps team. The Marines showed off their tremendous firepower at the top of the first inning by putting up eight runs against the Navy defense. The Marines maintained the lead throughout the game and the Navy found themselves down by nine runs with one last chance at the bottom of the fifth and final inning. The game became a bit of a nail-biter as Navy managed to put up five runs, but the final out was made by Ryan Skalnick, who is not only the league's commissioner, but was named the tournament's MVP. On the morning of Friday, July 21st, the members of the Lake Orion community gathered together to begin a major restoration project. Twenty-five years ago, local businessman Stan Sweet donated $25,000 to construct the gazebo in Children's Park. The gazebo became a gathering place for events like the annual Halloween parade and Christmas tree lighting ceremony. Merry Christmas! Early 90s it was built and a uh, dedication to um, Stan Sweet. And it's quite, you're right, it's the gathering place. We do a gazebo series or a music series here every Sunday. And the park itself, the children come down and play, people hang out and lounge underneath the gazebo. I believe we've had a couple of weddings that have happened here. And as we improve it, it's going to be utilized more, especially with the incoming commerce that we've got, the new restaurants, the new uh, wine social, our new creamery, 21, 20 Front Street, a lot of good things going on. Uh, when we put it up on social media that we were going to get busy on this, um, a lot of the comments came back how thankful they were because a lot of people really do appreciate that in the park. And what we're going to do is we're going to ask folks to help us keep it in pristine shape. Uh, the last decking was a hollow core and uh, the skateboards and the bikes, um, you can see the shapes of the wheels and, and the DPW advised us that was a lot of the damage. So we're going to ask people to please honor the park rules and not let bikes and skateboards um, on this. We, there's a lot of places in the community for the kids to enjoy that. Um, and uh, there's a lot of spaces for that, but we're going to ask please not here. So it is a gem, it's a jewel of our community, and we want to keep it that way. Thanks to a grant of $17,000 from the Home Depot Foundation, volunteers were able to begin work on the renovation. On Friday, the gazebo was stripped down to bare wood as damaged flooring and lattice were removed. A few years ago, Rob Cavanaugh, who is a community member, he was on the Parks and Rec board. And he came to me and said, is there anything Home Depot can do? And we weren't sure how we were going to do it, how we were going to run it. And uh, so it started there. And then Jeremy from the DPW came to me last spring and said, we got, we got to do something this year. Please, is there anything? So we partnered with the American Legion. Originally, this property was the Legion's, and they donated it to the village. So that's how this whole thing is really kind of the puzzles fit together. And it was the right time and resources. Um, and that's... Here it is, and it's it's going to be great when it's done. Volunteers returned on Saturday morning to install the new decking, steps, and ramp made up of composite material that's virtually maintenance-free. The team of volunteers moved so quickly that the gazebo was able to host a performance by 18-year-old Grace Lee as part of the Lake Orient's Gazebo Concert Series. 
On Thursday, July 27th, the Lake Orion community came together to celebrate the official grand opening of the Orient Art Studio at the Moose Tree Nature Preserve near Weber Elementary School. Before moving to Moose Tree, the Orient Art Center offered classes at the Diamond Daves building on M24. The classes were moved to its new location in April of this year. It was a partnership of friends, friends in the community that networked, that knew that this facility, even though it had had many useful years as being a nature preserve for students, it was actually paid for by the taxpayers because of the downturn in our economic system. They no longer had the money to fund it, so it was laying idle. And it was decided that if the art center could take it over, it would still be used by the community, and we could actually do something for it. And it's, it's really a, a great marriage of a couple partners. Now don't confuse the art studio with the Orion Art Center. The center is still located in downtown Lake Orion near Children's Park and hosts exhibits and other events throughout the year. The art studio offers a wide variety of painting and pottery classes to children and adults. Immediately following that event, approximately 20 bicyclists gathered on the grounds of Weber Elementary School for the start of the tribute to a fallen colleague. The Ride of Silence honored the memory of Ralph Finneran on the sixth anniversary of his death. Finneran was riding his bike when he was killed by a distracted driver on Giddings near the GM Orient Assembly Plant. A ghost bike marks the location of the accident. A ghost bike is a monument to the person who was killed at that spot. And what I would like people to think of is, remember that was a husband, a son, a mother, a father, a daughter. It's somebody that somebody loved. You know, say a prayer if you believe, have a thought for that family. And drive mindful. Look at that bike and go, whoa, that could have been me, that could have been my family member. The Ride of Silence was organized by Holy Spokes, a nonprofit organization that operates out of the lower level of the Moose Tree Nature Preserve near Weber Elementary. Friends and family members followed a seven-mile course that took them onto Clarkson, Joslin, Walden, and Baldwin Roads, ending back at Weber. The message is to bring awareness to bicycle safety, also to um, keep you know everyone safe on our paths, and also to keep the drivers aware that they need to be careful of bicyclists um, at intersections, at driveways, all of those types of things. On Saturday, July 29th, the Orion Veterans Memorial was the setting for a wedding, the first ever to be held on the grounds. The bride was Valerie Romaine Johnson, owner of Holistic Health by Valerie. The groom was Brian Penns, a six-year veteran of the U.S. Navy, who is going to seminary school to become a Navy chaplain. The couple has known each other for 26 years, first meeting in school in Sterling Heights. Both are currently Lake Orion residents. Veterans Memorial Chair Dr. Joe Master Mateo told us that he could have never predicted that the memorial would be the setting for a wedding. This is a wonderful occasion for the Township of Orion, the Orion Veterans Memorial, and everybody connected with it, the uh, dozens of volunteers. This is, this is something we never planned on. This is wonderful. Brian and Valerie, I now get to pronounce you husband and wife, Brian, you may kiss your bride. On Wednesday, August 2nd, friends, family, and first responders gathered at Bad Brad's Barbecue on Baldwin Road to say goodbye to Fire Chief Bob Smith. A Plymouth area native, Smith moved to Lake Orion in 1980 and began his career with the fire department as a paid on-call firefighter in 1986. He went full-time in 1990 and replaced retiring fire chief Jeff Key in 2012. When I started here, we had two stations. We were building a third one. Um, we had probably 55, 60 people on the fire department. They were all paid on call, except for the fire chief. And uh, we were running about 700 calls a year. Uh, now we've got four stations. We've got a crew of 22 full-time people plus the paid on call. We're averaging about eight calls a day or about 25, 2600 calls a year. So that's how much it's uh, evolved. After 31 years on the job, the fire chief announced his retirement. He enjoyed his final day on the job on Wednesday. They picked me up at 3 o'clock and um, they um, took me around uh, in the ladder truck, the new ladder truck that I'm very proud of. I was part of getting that. 
and um, dropped me off at the house. And uh, it's still, I know it's gonna, it's gonna get worse before the night's over because uh, it's hard. It's hard, you know. I, I keep telling the people though in the township, I'm not saying goodbye. I, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be coming around and raising all kinds of heck, you know. So as a citizen now. On Friday, August 4th, area families braved an unusually chilly and overcast summer evening to visit Orion Township's annual Big Rig gig. In its 14th year, children were invited to climb on and inside a wide variety of vehicles, ranging from emergency vehicles to a garbage truck. The event cost $5 per car load, a bargain for families looking for a fun activity at Friendship Park. Um, we do it because, quite frankly, I love it and I think the kids love it. It's nice to see the entire community come out and have a good time. Um, it's very affordable for all families, five bucks a car load, pack it in, and what kind of entertainment can you get for only five bucks? It's just a, it's just a blast. The highlight of the evening was when Life Flight of Michigan passed overhead, then proceeded to land in Friendship Park. Once it came to a stop, families were invited to see the helicopter up close. On Saturday, August 5th, almost 200 classic and muscle cars lined the streets of downtown Lake Oregon for the annual Kids and Cops Charity Cruise. Sponsored by Galling Buick GMC, it was the third year the event has been held in the village. It's kind of a back to the bricks kind of car show and, and I've noticed that even the people that bring their cars like this setting better. Um, it gives it that, uh, that small town feel and even the business owners are having a good time, so it really is, uh, I think, the best show of the year. At the end of the day, 70 trophies were handed out to participants, and when the final tally was counted, more than $3,500 was raised at the event. On the morning of Saturday, August 12th, veterans, dignitaries, and residents gathered at the Orion Veterans Memorial for a special ceremony. Board Chairperson Dr. Joseph Mastromateo welcomed those in attendance and introduced guests. Prompted by Park Manager Bob Watros, two former Marines unveiled the new War Dogs Monument. They have saved many thousands of our soldiers' lives, number one. And number two, uh, they have saved a lot of uh, equipment from being lost in shortening the war effort. The monument was created by artist Frank Varga, who also created the center monument depicting a son and his parents. Additional work was done by Lake Orion resident Steve Leach. Well, that would have been Frank Varga, the same man who did uh, our center monument. Uh, and I think that Frank said this was his last hoorah. Uh, he probably wouldn't be doing any more. He's not doing good. Uh, he sure has left his mark here. Hasn't yes, he has. Yep. And uh, he's a nice man to work with. Yep. And he was dedicated all the way through this dog thing. I think he did this dog, both dogs, in about a month. Yeah, he worked every night and day on them until he got them done. The 2017 Dragon in the Lake Festival officially got underway on Thursday, August 24th, when dozens of kids gathered under the Dragon Pup Tent for the second annual foam party. Jay Sanborn Entertainment Company once again provided the music and the Sophie Suds. On Friday night, festival organizers hosted a beer and wine tasting in downtown Lake Oregon as a thank you to the event sponsors. Visitors enjoyed live music performances and food was provided by local businesses. Beer was courtesy of Homegrown Brewery in Oxford and the wine came from Wine Social located in downtown Lake Orion. While that was going on, Lake residents began assembling on the water for the Lake Orion Lake Association's annual lighted boat parade led by Scott Campbell's Fire Breathing Dragon. There were seven official entries, but they were joined by dozens of boats looking to get in on the fun. A pontoon loaded with judges scrutinized each boat in several categories. At an awards ceremony on Sunday, it was announced that the entry from Brian McMahon and Brent DeClark received first place honors. The team received a $300 cash prize courtesy of Ray Seas of Lapeer. All I can say about the winning entry is the ship didn't sink. The winning entry is the Titanic and they had an iceberg in front of it. And uh, the only thing that was missing was the sinking of the ship. But they did have everything else. They had the iceberg, they had the violin player, it was, it was absolutely spectacular. On Saturday, August 26th, the streets of downtown Lake Orion were closed to traffic as dozens of vendors set up shop along Flint Street and Broadway offering food, arts, crafts, music, and more. It means so much, of course, to the Art Center because this is one of our major fundraisers. But I think as far as bringing the community together as a whole, 
uh, friends meet who haven't seen each other all summer. People make new friends. I think it's just a, a wonderful event and it couldn't be a better setting in this beautiful little village area. We are so lucky to live in an area that still has a downtown as quaint and as interesting as Lake Orion. As visitors stroll through the downtown area, they may have noticed artists of all ages creating masterpieces for the annual Chalk Art Challenge, which has been part of Dragon in the Lake since the beginning. $1,500 in prize money was donated by the Chadwick Group of Lake Orion. On the ground surrounding the Orion Art Center, children took advantage of the games, rides, and entertainment in the kids' zone. There's pony rides, there's uh, live characters, uh, there's a, a dragon and a, a raccoon that dance around. There's Lego games, there's all kinds of events for children, and there's a special tent sponsored by the DIA where children can actually experience the creation of art. Just a short distance from the downtown area, organizers, competitors, and fans were gathering at Greens Park for the first ever Brave the Wave jet ski competition. Approximately 30 riders competed in races and freestyle events on Lake Orion. The event was organized by Michigan Wave Makers and was the first of this magnitude here in Michigan. Over at the Dragon Pup Tent, the final act on Saturday night was the always popular Square Pegs. The tent was filled to capacity as the band entertained the crowd with pop hits from the 80s. The final day of Dragon on the Lake got underway early Sunday morning with an opening ceremony in Greens Park. 23 teams made up of 20 people per team gathered together for the start of the ninth annual Dragon Boat Races. New race directors Matt Gibb and Elena Campbell welcomed participants and explained the rules, and then the first race of the day was underway. The race is divided into three heats, with the times of the first two heats added together to determine the seed of the third and final heat. So the Art Center definitely is the number one organization that we're here to support. They put on this whole entire festival, um, Dragon on the Lake Festival. Um, but number two is breast cancer research um, and cancer research in general, which is really important. And we have, you know, our three sponsors, major sponsors for this event, which are Pulte Homes and then also Beaumont Hospital and McLaren and the Carmanos Cancer Institute and we actually have a team from Beaumont called Hope Floats and they are all cancer survivors that participate on that team and then we also have another team that travels all the way from Ontario from Toronto Ontario to compete as well and they are also breast cancer survivors so that's really exciting to be raising money for something like that. Matt Give gave credit to the entire community for coming together to make the Dragon Boat Races possible. Well, Elena and I are running around acting like we're in charge and we're doing this, but um, all the pieces are there. They all fit in the puzzle. So the Knights of Columbus are working the parking and the uh, the rotary on the, the, the rotaries dock. on the docks, and the Women's Federation Club is working all the registration and the water sales and. Uh, you know, even downtown, you know, everybody pitches in and has a role. And so the community just kind of rises up. Everybody knows what they're supposed to do and yep. it all falls together. And, you know, hopefully we're a little bit of the glue that keeps it on track. After the times in the first two heats were added up, it was determined that the top three teams with the fastest times would face each other in the final race of the day to determine the 2017 champion. In lane one on the left side of your screen is last year's champion, the Bernie Directive. In the center is BYT CrossFit, and in lane three on the right is Eurasis Dragon. Wow, they are making some wake out there. That's 10 meters. Boy, oh boy. Oh, that's a photo. Woo! All right, well, we don't know officially, and we are not going to call that ourselves. Too close to call. As you can see, it was a photo finish. Participants would have to wait until the award ceremony for the official results. So that means with a time of 1 minute 30.6 seconds is BYT CrossFit the key to winning one not giving up we were ahead of them and they started pulling up next to us and
and we just we started yelling and screaming and didn't give up and apparently it was enough to get there. I have a saying and I say it always that if you take care of a community, a community will take care of you. I truly, with all of my being, believe that. And the community shined again for us. You know, this is the art center's largest fundraiser. This is literally how we keep our doors open. So without the community supporting this and us putting on an event that the community is going to love, it wouldn't be a success. So thank you to everyone from our vendors to people that came and bought beer to people that shopped local downtown. All of that is so important to get everybody to come back next year. Yeah, thanks to the community uh, volunteers. Always need volunteers, never have enough volunteers. Please come out and help. All the sponsors, so many, too many to mention. Gosh, Joe, we have, what, 50 sponsors in total. So many different people help out with the festival. Uh, and thank you, thank you for that. Uh, Alana Hart, of course, uh, my wing girl. Uh, Elena Campbell and Matt Gibb, who did the Dragon Boat races. Terry and Ryan on the jet ski side, great job. Uh, just so many people that were involved this year. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. On Saturday, September 9th, Orion Township's Wildwood Amphitheater was the site of the fourth annual L.O. Palooza. The event ran from noon until 9 p.m. and offered visitors a wide variety of family-friendly fun while raising money for the Orion On Deck project. Hey, um, first and foremost, it's going to be fun, <laughs> um, but we've got a petting zoo, we've got um, vendors, we've got um, different food vendors and different um, shopping vendors and live music and a beer tent and a cornhole tournament and snacks and all sorts of stuff. The big draw at the event is the lineup of musicians and bands that perform throughout the day on the stage at the Wildwood Amphitheater. While that was going on, barbecue chefs set up their grills in the parking lot next to the Opa restaurant for the third annual barbecue competition benefiting the Lake Orion Lake Association. Six teams competed for cash prizes, hoping to win best ribs, best wings, and best overall. A team of judges were faced with the challenge of tasting all entries and naming the best ribs and wings. The winners were announced at an award ceremony at the end of the day. We're excited. Yeah. Uh, we were, yeah, <laughs> we were shocked. <laughs> Have you done well in this competition before? Last year we took second overall. Second yeah. overall. We this did. This is the second time we've ever tried a competition, so wow. this is mm -hmm. exciting. So that's cool. fantastic. Yeah. Real happy. So what's your secret to success? I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> Luck. Just try to make Luck it and product. hard work. <laughs> Luck. Putting out something we like. In 2017, the Lake Orion community had spent months trying to raise funds to build an accessible ballpark at Friendship Park. Organizers had been relying on Patronicity.com to crowdfund an inclusive ballpark at Friendship Park, but found that they were falling short of their goal. Then their efforts received a tremendous boost when the longtime local businessman Larry Mullins presented them with a check for $50,000 on September 7th. They were still short of their goal when the Orion Township Supervisor Chris Barnett teamed up with the school board president Scott Taylor for one last push. The duo would camp out at Friendship Park for 24 hours calling on friends, family and local businesses to help them reach their goal of $150,000. As things wound down on the morning of September 13th, much to their surprise, the community had come through and they hit their target. Uh, I, I ran into Scott and we were talking about something totally unrelated and I was kind of sharing my, uh, not disappointment, but just like, ah, just man, I thought we'd do better because we were at like $20,000 like a week and a half ago. And it was really Scott that said, you know what, let's let's just, let's get together, pick a day and just sit out there and just try to focus our energy. And so, here we are. Lake Orion is so strong. Um, I've been here my whole life, 42 years. and. You know, it's the, the reason people stay here is because it is a true community, even though we're getting we're growing so much and, and you know, there are a ton of people, but it, it still is a small town and it still is, you know, you're walking through Kroger and, you know, five people and, you know, people truly care. The Halloween season was officially ushered in on Saturday, September 16th, when approximately two dozen zombies descended upon the streets of downtown Lake Orion for the fourth annual Zombie Walk. The event originated as a birthday celebration for Lloyd Coe, owner of Ed's Broadway Gift and Costume, located at the corner of Flint and Broadway. 
Uh, it's just, it's fun. You know, it's just a party. Everybody gets dressed up and looks like a zombie and acts crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it started off this uh, birthday party for me. And uh, and then we just developed it into a fundraiser for the Christmas parade group. Participants assembled at Ed's for the start of the walk, then made their way to CJ's Lakeside Grill, Lockhart's Barbecue, and Valentino's Italian Grill before ending up at the American Legion. The undead received playing cards at each stop. Whoever ended up with the best hand split the pot with the Orient Area Parade Group. In September, when the remnants of one of the area's first sawmills was removed from Paint Creek for environmental reasons, there was a surprising backlash from some members of the community. As you walk or bike on the Paint Creek Trail near Kern and Clarkston Roads, a marker reminds visitors of the history of the area. One of Lake Orion's first sawmills was built on the site in 1825 to cut lumber and to ground wheat into flour. A decade later, several additional buildings were constructed. In 1865, it was purchased by Robert G. Rudd and became Rudd's Mill. The buildings were demolished in 1926 and the Creek Dam was destroyed during a storm in 1946. The remains of the dam sat in Paint Creek for decades. The large concrete slabs became a hangout for teens who covered them with graffiti. In September, numerous entities came together and did what many thought was impossible. They removed the rubble from Paint Creek, making the state-owned land pristine once again. It was probably two years in the works, and uh, it started as a conversation with Aaron Watley and myself. We started bringing the other partners and players in. We're actually technically on state land, so the DNR had to be involved. Uh, we have a waterway here, so the Department of Environmental Quality, the DEQ, had to be involved. So we st started as a conversation, like I said, almost two years ago, uh, and finally kind of all the parties came together to make this happen, you know, what we're looking at today. Surprisingly, once it was announced that the debris had been removed by Superior Excavating, many people in the community responded with outrage, claiming the parties involved had destroyed history and even called the profanity-covered concrete art. You know, I, I understand this was an area that uh, they, they were very passionate about. I grew up in Lake Orion. I went to Lake Orion High School. I, I have ties with down here as well. I didn't come down here and spray paint and do all the other things like some people do, but I still have ties with it. And I understand you're passionate, but it's, it's an environmental hazard and concern that we needed to address, not just for one person, but for the masses. Whatever happens up here affects people downstream. And we need to take care of our portion, hoping that everybody else will contribute to theirs. Also in September, we took a behind-the-scenes look at a movie being filmed in Lake Orion. With over 45,000 YouTube views, the news story became one of ONTV's most popular videos ever. Here's Joe Johnson with the story. On Friday, September 29th, a crowd of angry protesters assembled at the steps of Village Hall. But don't worry, the rage subsided as soon as the director yelled cut. The crowd was made up of extras and were taking part in a scene from a movie being filmed right here in Lake Orion. We love Lake Orion. The village is amazing. The people are amazing. I mean, the, the geography is amazing. The beauty of all the, the, the buildings and the heritage that this uh, suburban location in southeastern Michigan has kind of had. And, and we're just loving showcasing it. Lake Orion Police Chief Jerry Narsh has been acting as a consultant and also has a role in the film as, you guessed it, the police chief. So we met about a year and a half ago, and at that time it was at an opening for another film. He approached me and he said uh, that he had a film in mind and he needed a police department in a Midwest town to shoot it in, and uh, I said, yeah, let's talk. Uh, so about six months ago he called and uh, talked about the script and talked about how they wanted Lake Orion to be in that movie, and of course uh, we look at that as a tremendous opportunity for our businesses, uh, for our town, a lot of our landmarks. Uh, so what a wonderful opportunity to, uh, to participate, so we said yeah. In the film, police officers investigate a series of crimes that may have supernatural origins. The culprit may be the Nain Rouge, a mythical figure that, according to legend, has appeared just prior to tragic events in the Detroit area, dating all the way back to the 1700s. Virginia native Jesse Jensen stars as the Lake Orion police officer investigating the crimes alongside an undercover officer played by Detroit area native Amar Nemo. Oh, it's been amazing. I've um, had the honor of working with the LOPD and Jerry Narsh 
the chief. And, um, you know, my military background, I was in the Army National Guard, did help a little bit, but there was so much about the, the officer training that has put so much realism in the film, and um, that is invaluable. It really is. It means everything. You know, I always wanted to work with Sam. I worked with him before when he first started out. I've been acting since I was 18 on and off. And uh, we've been talking about this film for the past two years, you know, to get me in it and to get my friend in it, Nathan. And finally, you know, we finally did it. And this man, Sam, knows how to shoot. I call him Sam Bay. Michael Bay, he's Sam Bay. This guy knows how to shoot, knows how to edit. He knows how to do everything. He, he's just a, he's a real artist. He has an eye for all this kind of stuff. And I can't wait till everybody sees it. It's going to be awesome. On the morning of Wednesday, October 4th, Oakland County officials and pet lovers gathered in the lobby of the brand new animal shelter and pet adoption center for a grand opening ceremony. Oakland County Executive L. Brooks Patterson welcomed visitors. One, two, three. Hey! I wish these people could have seen the Brownwood facility. It was 40, 50 years old, out of date. Uh, just there was a certain animal stench. It just wasn't what I want Oakland County to look like. So, and, and there were people who were complaining about it as well, and rightfully so. So we spent, I think, a fair amount of money, over 15 million, to build this state-of-the-art facility. And uh, I think it shows they were sincere about providing good quality care for the animals uh, as we attempt to adopt them out. So uh, if you take a look around, you'll see, I think, I know, probably the best animal shelter in the United States. On Thursday, October 5th, 115 vendors set up in Lake Orion High School's field house for the Chamber's Shop Local Expo. The event was planned to coincide with the high school's parent-teacher conferences. So our mission is to support the businesses that support our community. We like to bring the community in and introduce them to some of our members. A lot of these places, um, you know, maybe don't have the foot traffic in their business uh, that they would like to have, and this is a really great way to connect them with those people who might need their goods and services. Vendors included service providers, nonprofit organizations, and local businesses who were allowed to sell merchandise for the first time. Visitors also enjoyed a wide variety of food samples. On the morning of Saturday, October 7th, approximately 50 runners and walkers gathered at Fire Station 1 in downtown Lake Orion for the start of the first annual Run With Fire 5K Run and Walk. Participants made their way to the starting line in front of the Orion Arts Center as the steady rain came down, at 9 a.m., the race was underway. It came about um, just a fundraising idea to help the Goodfellows of Orion Township. That's a group within the fire department that um, they help needy families every, every year at the holiday season. It was the first event of its kind to take place on the new extension connecting the path to Paint Creek Trail. Medals were awarded in various age groups and trophies were given to the top male and female runners and top firefighter. Finishing first overall was Lake Orion resident Matt Shell with a time of 23.06. On the evening of Thursday, October 12th, more than 250 women descended on downtown Lake Orion to take part in Babes on Broadway. Participants were encouraged to visit all of the 27 businesses taking part in the event while collecting gifts and trinkets along the way. They are going to um, get the best treatment from our Broadway gents. They're going to get uh, charming um, men um, smiling at them and, and opening doors and things like that. You're, they're going to go into each of the shops and the shops are going to have a little gift for them. Um, everybody is going to have a great time and we're going to end up at Lockhart's and uh, they'll get to see Representative Riley um, present the check. Uh, we've been raising funds for Humble Design, like I said. We'll present the check. Um, they'll get to have um, some gorgeous cupcakes from um, That's About Chocolate, and, um, and it'll be a really nice night. They'll get some uh, raffle prizes that they could win at the end of the night. Homecoming Week kicked off on Sunday, October 15th, with a parade that made its way through the streets of downtown Lake Orion. The Lake Orion Marching Band fired up the crowd with the high school's fight song, followed by hundreds of students representing all of Lake Orion's schools. Athletes from a wide variety of sports marched along the route, as well as Lake Orion's cheer and dance teams. And, of course, the entire homecoming court was introduced to the crowd by high school teacher Lori Hogan. One of the highlights of Homecoming Week was the annual Powder Puff football game between the juniors and seniors. Each team had over 100 players on the roster. The seniors got the win thanks to a 49-yard touchdown run by Ali Lazara. On Friday, homecoming week wound down with a football game 
between the Dragons and the Birmingham Sea Home Maples in an OAA Red crossover game. The Dragons soundly defeated the Maples thanks to four touchdowns by Dylan Frank, who rushed for 300 yards. At halftime, the 2017 Homecoming King and Queen were crowned. I was just so excited. I didn't expect to win. I was just so excited to even be on court, and I'm just so I'm just so happy that I won and I got to win with my best friend. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can, yeah, second, I second that. <laughs> it's the same. On Wednesday, October 18th, filmmakers of all ages were invited to attend ONTV's fourth annual Wildwood Film Festival at the Goodrich Oxford 7 Theater. Family and friends filled the theater to capacity as 16 locally produced short films were shown, the most ever for this event. Things kicked off on Friday the 13th as filmmakers gathered at the Owen TV studio to go over the rules of the film challenge. Each team had approximately 72 hours to plan, shoot, and edit a short film that incorporated the number 13. Had a scene shot at Canterbury Village and included an assigned line of dialogue. Six adult teams turned in finished films while 10 teams competed in the youth division. A panel of judges looked at every film and voted for the top films. Netting a first place finish in the adult division was a good death produced by Brian Forsvet and his team. The live audience is what makes this whole thing. Like, this experience, it wouldn't be anything if I wasn't sharing it with good friends, people who could also make films, you know? <laughs> and it wouldn't, be, it wouldn't be what it is without an audience, someone who can appreciate what other people have made. And finishing first in the youth division was Charlie Fracker and Friends with their short film about last night, which tells the story of two friends trying to return a mystical sword to its rightful home. Um, it feels amazing. I really didn't think that I was going to win this. Um, I expected to, uh, I don't know, I didn't really expect this is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. On Wednesday, October 25th, hundreds of kids and parents came out for the annual Halloween parade hosted by the Lake Orion Downtown Development Authority. The parade started at the Eamon Center with Police Chief Jerry Narsh leading the way in the Police Department's 1941 Ford Police car. The parade traveled south on Broadway into the village where the local businesses handed out candy for the enthusiastic trick-or-treaters. We've got Jam Seagulling, who's our sponsor this year. Um, so they're passing out um, trick-or-treat bags. And then um, the community, uh, of course, the, the residents are the parade. And then all of the downtowners, they are ready for all of those trick-or-treaters and they pass out candy. And they've been excited about it. We've been talking about this for weeks. So today we had great weather. It was uh, cloudy all day, but the sun came out right in time for us to uh, walk in the parade. Um, all of the kids were waving, they were saying Happy Halloween. Um, all the downtown uh, businesses uh, were ready and waiting for them when they got down here. On Thursday, October 26th, members of the Orient Area Chamber of Commerce gathered at 20 Front Street for a ribbon cutting celebrating its one year anniversary. Owners Alan Getz and his wife Angela opened 20 Front Street in 2016 to showcase local and national musicians in a small scale setting. Uh, we opened about a year ago and we are an acoustic music venue uh, with a social cafe and creamery. We have jazz, rock and roll, uh, singer-songwriters, all different types of music, and then also um, some theatrical productions coming up as well. The building itself dates back to the 1940s and once housed the Middleton family dairy. Most recently, it was an antique store. The building was completely revamped to include the stage that you see today, as well as a separate cafe and a seasonal creamery. On the evening of Saturday, November 4th, approximately 300 people came out for the Lake Orion Lions A Christmas for Everyone charity auction, held at Malash's Palace Chrysler dealership on Lapeer Road. Those in attendance enjoyed a buffet dinner courtesy of Victoria's Bistro and were encouraged to take part in a silent and live auctions throughout the evening. Bidders had 140 items to choose from during the silent auction and 11 high-end items during a live auction, including this adorable puppy who ended up going home with a loving family. We've got a lot of people from the community. There's people who are also within our Lions Clubs, other Lions Clubs, plus people from the dealership who give us this wonderful location to have this auction at. Just thank you again for your continued uh, contributions towards our cause and just your wonderful donations over the years to, to make sure that we're able to put this event on. There's no way we could do it without your help. On the evening of Thursday, November 16th, the Orion Art Center kicked off its annual holiday market with an opening reception. 23 artists from Lake Orion and its surrounding communities offer a wide variety of paintings, pottery, jewelry, and more. The gifts that we offer are more personalized gifts 
they certainly are one of a kind. And for your special loved ones, your family members, the people that you work with, um, you, you're certain to find something here for everyone. On the evening of Monday, November 20th, a gas line ruptured near Brown Road in Joslin, sending an enormous fireball into the night sky and panicking area residents. The flames could be seen as far away as downtown Detroit. The gas was shut off about an hour later and the fire was out a short time later. Luckily, no one was injured in the accident and the cause of the rupture is still a mystery. On the evening of Saturday, November 25th, members of the community came together in Children's Park in downtown Lake Orion for a tree lighting ceremony. Village Council President Ken Van Portfleet welcomed those in attendance and introduced Jordan Knudsen of Nude Products, who was selling ornament kits to benefit the Shop with a Hero program. Later, Police Chief Jerry Narsh introduced 2017's honored veteran Bob Butler, who threw the switch to light up the tree. On the evening of Friday, December 1st, more than 400 people gathered at Galling View at June C for a night of music, food, and fun. Now in its 11th year, the Holly Jolly Folly benefits the Orient Area Parade Group, the nonprofit organization that makes the light parade possible. The event raises $15,000 to $18,000 every year through ticket sales and a silent auction. Um, we're just going to have a great time here tonight. Of course, we're raising money for the Orient Parade Group. Um, we uh, have this fundraiser every year. This is our 11th year here at Golling. And um, it just it's a very successful event, and we'll raise a lot of money tonight, and it helps keep the parade going. And, of course, the Parade Group is uh, a charitable organization and give to a lot of different charities here in the community. But the main one is uh, some scholarships to some uh, Orion High School seniors. And so this is a big, big night, and we're just thrilled to be a part of it. We love to be able to keep the parade funded so that it's really uh, in good stead going forward. So this is, this is what this is all about. 24 hours later, thousands of Lake Orion residents lined the streets of the downtown area for the start of the Orion Lighted Christmas Parade. John Cooper and DJ Rockin' Ronnie provided commentary at the corner of Front Street and Broadway. As always, Police Chief Jerry Narsh led the parade in the department's 1941 Ford police car. Riding in the passenger seat was 2017 honored veteran Bob Butler, who served in the U.S. Navy during World War II. Acting as Grand Marshal was Sue Turpin, who was a founding member of the Orion Area Parade Group and the creator of the Holly Jolly Folly. Right behind her were Citizens of the Year, Bob Watros and his wife, Tony. Bob is the park manager at the Orion Veterans Memorial. We've lived here, I guess, 50, over 50 years. Uh, I don't know, I like the town, I do what I can for the town, and I'm honored, really, to be doing, to be able to do this, which is something we've never done, you know. And I guess uh, I'm a little surprised by it. I think it's wonderful. I, the kids have such a good time, and uh, we want to throw candy to the kids. <laughs> Lake Orion's first nighttime light parade took place in 1995 with over 40 entries. The 2017 parade boasted over 80 entries, making it Lake Orion's largest light parade ever. Spectacular lighted floats, marching bands, community groups, and more made it a night to remember. The parade came to an end with Santa and Mrs. Claus ushering in the holiday season. On the morning of Saturday, December 2nd, approximately 100 children and family members came to the Orion Center to enjoy breakfast with the Grinch. The menu included green eggs and ham, as well as donuts, courtesy of Yates Cider Mill. Walgreens offered photo opportunities with the Grinch himself, and kids were encouraged to mix up some magical ranger food. Later, they gathered together to watch the classic 1966 animated short, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Kids were also encouraged to wander over to the Owen TV studio, where Santa Claus himself met with kids to collect Christmas wish lists from the little ones. This event was free to the public and was broadcast live on local cable television and streamed online. As the year came to an end, the Chamber of Commerce hosted a luncheon and award ceremony to honor those who made 2017 memorable. Owen TV's Joe Johnson looks back at the event. On Wednesday, December 6th, the Orion Area Chamber of Commerce hosted its annual Impact Awards at the Pink Creek Country Club in Lake Orion. The luncheon began with Executive Director Kim Urbanowski welcoming those in attendance. 
After lunch, awards were handed out in six different categories. Named Aspiring Entrepreneur of the Year was local magician and motivational speaker Anthony Grappito. Christy Shones received the Youth Impact Award for her work with the DAISY Project. Her efforts were largely responsible for improvements at Friendship Park to make it more accessible for those with special needs. Accepting the Community Beautification Award was Dr. Joe Master Mateo, who is the chairman of the Orion Veterans Memorial. Organizers broke ground on M24 in 1996, and the memorial has grown and evolved over the next two decades, most recently adding a War Dogs monument in August. Receiving the Economic Impact Award was 20 Front Street, located in downtown Lake Orion. Accepting the award on behalf of the concert venue's many investors was Alan Getz and his wife Angela. Named Entrepreneur of the Year was Valerie Penns, owner of Holistic Health by Valerie. She was also named Ambassador of the Year by the Chamber. And named Business Person of the Year was Dr. Chris Bennett of Orion Family Spinal Center. It, it meant a lot to me. I've been in the community for quite a while, for about four years now, and uh, love this community. So for me to be voted Business Person of the Year by you know my peers and colleagues uh, was really humbling. And so it was, it was exciting and we had a lot of fun. When you go back, you know, the story that you told about making that decision to go back to school and to start this business, did you ever envision a path that brought you up to this podium uh, today? Uh, no, actually. You know, you never know what, how things are going to turn out. You know, you just kind of step on a leap of faith and, and uh, see how things go. And, uh, yeah, I'm just, I, every day it's like a new, a new exciting chapter. And so this is just one of those. On the evening of Wednesday, December 13th, Dozens of children were invited to the Meyer store in Oxford for Shop with a Hero, one of many such events taking place throughout the area in the days leading up to Christmas. As families arrived for the event, children were taken to a dining area where they shared a meal with officers and firefighters. Then they were off to do a little shopping using gift cards courtesy of Meyer. This is the uh, annual Shopping with the Heroes that, that we do as a department every year along with uh, the Oxford uh, uh, PD, the Village of Oxford. Uh, it's something where we bring in kid, you know, needy kids uh, we, we put them with one of our officers, it's called Shopping with the Heroes Day. Uh, the officers have dinner with the kids uh, and then take them shopping. Uh, and they're, they're given a gift certificate through Myers, and then each family is given a, uh, a meal to take home for the holidays that's put together by Myers. On Friday, December 15th, volunteers assembled in the gymnasium of the CERP building to begin sorting donations of food and toys. Most of the food you see here was collected by area schools during food drives. Volunteers sorted food into categories before filling boxes that were delivered to seniors and families in need on Saturday. Well, basically we're helping, I think it's a little over 100 families who need a hands up this year and we are giving them enough food for a week and some toys for their children and some hats and mittens for the kids. So the high schools, the various schools uh, have food drives and we go and we pick them up and that's what you're seeing out here is all this food is from school food drives. And then the Lions Club, out in the hall, they buy probably about $10,000 worth of everything from vegetables to laundry soap to toilet paper to cakes and mixes. So every family will get one of that. And then tomorrow, after we sort all the food, which is what we're doing, then we'll go around and we'll shop for each family. You get a sheet and you actually shop. If it's a family of four, they might get five boxes of food plus toys. And then tomorrow, when you deliver to the family, you come into here first, and they will get ham, eggs, bread, milk, all the cold food. So they for sure have enough food for a week or a week and a half. On the morning of Sunday, December 17th, approximately 80 runners of all ages gathered at the Orion Center for the start of the first ever Snow Dash 5K race. Santa Claus was on hand to greet the racers as they arrived. With the temperature at a mild 24 degrees, the first Snow Dash was underway. Well, uh, we do the Dragon Dash in May every year, and uh, my race timer, Rod from Rot Pack Racing, has been trying to talk me into doing this for a while, and um, I always just thought it was too crazy, but this year I decided, why not? Let's go for it. To make things a little easier for participants, Orion Township Parks and Rec plowed the path along the Pollyann Trail. The course took runners to Orion Township Hall before they turned around and came back to the Orion Center. 
Well, Aaron Watley, our parks director, uh, he uh, talked one of his guys, Dave, into plowing it for us. And he not only plowed it once, he had to plow it twice. Because we had the big snowfall and we thought we were done. And then we got a few more inches the other day, so he actually plowed it twice for us. And it's in, it's in beautiful condition. Couldn't ask for a better course. And with that, we'll wrap up our look back at the major events that helped shape Lake Orion in 2017. Thanks for watching. Happy New Year, Lake Orion.